Thank you. Thank you, Ch uh, Chair Gelso, members of the committee. Hope you folks are doing well. Uh, I'm Lou Frederick from North and Northeast Portland, District 43. Uh, I sent everybody information about House Bill 4062 last week, and I'm here to highlight some of that information, answer questions, and provide any, some more rationale for the bill. I do have one amendment that you mentioned, uh, and, there will, and there, will others, there may be others in response to any input from the Oregon Department of Education. House Bill 4062, Privacy and Security of, of Student Records. Uh, some of you will recall at the end of the 2011 session when an education package was passed, uh, there was a lot of haste in that. I think that's an understatement. Many of the components were not vetted through this committee, or if they were, they weren't voted out of this committee. There was little, if any, policy deliberation on a comp very complicated bill. I've talked about that in, in, uh, in other settings and in reference to other subjects. Part of the education reform push of the last few years has involved the collection of data about kids. You might have seen some headlines today regarding tests are for entering kindergartners. I don't know if you saw this or not. They are given 60 seconds to identify as many letters as possible from a chart of 100 letters. Apparently Beaverton five-year-olds made it through about 25 letters on an average. Three Oregonian reporters took the same test and made it through 50 to, six, 50 to 65. Now here's the thing. Who decided that this piece of information was a meaningful test of kindergarten readiness? What science is behind it, that, or, or, or is there any? Or was a contract let to a vent vendor and they developed a test and now the kids have to take it and we then lament the sorry state of readiness for our young students? Is the science better for the rest of the test? I have no idea. Now here's one thing, that piece of information is not written on a paper and used by the teacher to guide instruction, and it's not discarded when its usefulness, if any, expires. It's stored in an electronic database, and that little nugget of information about each kid is retained. Never mind that it might, might be meaningless, never mind that the folks who don't know any better may attempt to interpret such a test in a way that the test itself does not support. Now, if I were to write a bill that I really wanted to see passed, it would require to it would require that rigorous, now I want to note that word rigorous, standards of reliability and more importantly val validity be required of any new program inflicted on our students and teachers. It would be to require that there be an answer to the question, what does this have to do with teaching and learning? before we invest scarce funds and even scarcer resources of time and attention on these activities. In the case of, the, of any testing regimen, we have to get answers to the question, do the results of these tests really mean what we are assuming they mean? To answer that, you need field testing and a variety of other professional vetting. Now, I introduced this bill because both the technology to collect, store, and share data about young people and the drive to use it are running ahead of appropriate safeguards and even running ahead of conscientious policy decisions. These programs are tied to their usefulness to current and future researchers. Ethical guidelines regarding research using human subjects do not fully account for the personal risks that arise from the collection and storage of personal information. There is now a national database designed to gather test results, discipline records, and personal information on students from the earliest age. We all know that the boundaries of privacy and personal autonomy have already been breached in the electronic collection, storage, and sharing of information about us all. The risk of uh, the ch children is far greater. Decisions we make now may determine whether today's third grader can ever shed the ups and downs of childhood. Risks to our children are potentially vast, while the benefits of this database remain nebulous. For me, there is a basic principle. Information should be gathered, stored, and shared for the educational benefit of the student. While I understand and appreciate the drive to amass a trove of information for future research, I also believe that there must be ethical guidelines that prioritize the security of the individual. A person's privacy and autonomy are vital to his or her future well-being. A number of issues remain unsettled. Who has access to that information? Who can correct the information when it's wrong and how can content be challenged? Can personal identifiers be reliably separated from stored information when it's shared? Will commercial interests gain access to the database for marketing or other purposes? House Bill 4062 would give several common sense expectations to the force of law, including it will require a privacy risk assessment to be part of any proposal to expand student records or allow access by a third party. It will strengthen the requirements for appropriate standards for privacy and security of records, and especially for the personal identifying information associated with those records. It will require the Department of Education to adopt standards related to the collection, retention, and security of student records, and to provide technical 
assistance to educational institutions to help them comply with those standards. It will require that parents and legal guardians be allowed to view their children's records and challenge and request correction of incorrect information. It will prohibit disclosure of personal identifying information to individuals who are not responsible for the student's educational program. And it will require that student personal identifying information be removed from the record when it is no longer relevant for preparing the student's educational program or supporting the student's application for employment or admission to a post-secondary educational program or institution. Now these are just the highlights. There's additional detail in the bill. A permanent student record used to be only as permanent as the paper it was written on and accessible as the file cabinet it was stored in. Now records are stored electronically, able to be translated instantly and stored indefinitely. We should all be concerned about amassing data about young people given the rapid, rapidly advancing technology for matching data with personal identifiers and using those matches for pur purposes not contemplated when it was gathered. For example, should behavior of a, second gra a seventh grader bear on that person's future college admission or employment? I know we were all angels at that age. I know I certainly was, and I can see the halos on all of you guys. Or should, should families be bombarded with targeted product ads based on data gleaned from combining student, base, student databases with other resources? The law currently provides no recourse to individuals and families that could be harmed in this way. This bill simply codifies some basic preventative measures. Now it's interesting that having gone down this road as far as we have, it is suggested that this subject needs more study before we can enact safeguards. Meanwhile, as I've said before, data collection, storage, and sharing are running far ahead of policy. It seems to me that the study should have happened first, but it's too late for that. It's also suggested that enacting the kind of safeguards contained in this bill will, will endanger the longitudinal database, that it will endanger programs designed to provide data to researchers. Which should come first? the safety and security of student privacy, or the desires of researchers. This concern suggests that the longitudinal database is incompatible with the basic common sense safeguards included in this bill. If they are incompatible, which one should go? These programs did not come from the sky. They were created by human beings, and human beings can regulate them to protect our kids. I have obtained one amendment, which you have in your packets. It adds a specific prohibition against us using student records for sales, advertising, or marketing purposes. And we are uh, studying suggestions from the Oregon Department of Education. And if amendments results, I'll, I'll let you know as soon as possible. I want to thank you for considering this bill. I think it's <coughs> urgent. And frankly, I hope you'll act on it promptly, because the test results are being sent out there nationally right now. Thank you.